I'm, I, you know, I wonder, am I doing the right thing? Is this, you know, did this guy do it? I mean, I, it seemed to me from what all what I saw that, you know, it was pretty likely that he did it. I mean, he had the blood evidence and stuff like that. But then there was that the one guy that uh, then they never found his body. Now, you know, what happened to him? I mean, could he have done it? I don't know. It is an obvious question, a question I had presented to all the people interviewed. The tape restoration is showing Locus and Ryan searching for Stephen, which only makes the question more relevant. What happened to Stephen Avcast? By process of elimination, I proceed. We did find some blood, and of course the uh, infamous Johnny hat that was found. Um, we were never able to find any more remains of that person, so we don't know if he's dead or alive. They, they never found Stephen's body, but they found Johnny. But they found his hat, you know. So, I mean, I don't know. It's just, it's just weird that the only thing left of him is a hat. Yeah. Coming right at you. All right, I'm going to get going here. I'll be back in about two minutes. Okay, man. Okay. I'll be on that before we get back. We don't think that uh, Mr. Afkas would uh, uh, would be able to uh, set up Mr. Seward uh, because the amount of blood that we found of Mr. Afkas is, is so great that he would have bled to death trying to set Mr. Seward up. There goes a little tyrant. Oh, whoa, man, check it out, man. What? what? Here, find that over there. Oh, wow, what's that? I don't know, man. Here you go. Looks like a light. Yo, it's Steven's light. What? Steven's light. Yo, Steve! Steven! In finding that Jim's alibi holds up, we have to attempt to answer the question raised. Who killed these people? The likely suspect would appear to be Steven. As I watch these frames, though, I see no recognition in Locus's face. I see Locus, a man larger than Steven, turn tail and run, as does Ryan. Stephen Avcast, being the culprit of the horrendous massacre that took place in the minutes that followed this tape, is impossible to believe. Along with the amount of blood that belongs to Stephen Avcast, this makes me believe that he also was murdered in the Pine Barrens. I am now also of the belief that the killer was somehow something more horrendous than possible to imagine. What could have killed three healthy men? What would have left no footprints? What would have torn the men into 47 pieces, leaving no evidence of a struggle? We could tell by the, what was the left of the infliction of the wound that it was a serrated type weapon. That much we know. There were no knife fragments or any evidence of the actual weapon used other than the cuts themselves. Well, we're, we're a rural county. We have people who are not greatly educated. Folk, uh, rumors and folklore are common. I put no credence in anything of that nature. I just go by the facts that the police were able to ascertain. A monster? Yeah, I think this person's a monster. I don't believe fact or fiction. I don't believe the fiction. I think that this is a person, and I'm going to find out who it is. I'm going to reconstruct and do my job to recover what has been lost, the facts. It is as though the Jersey Devil is a monster reborn in a digital age, reborn on the internet, a demon captured on IRC logs, mangled video, whispers in the dark. It is to these that I look. It's totally anonymous. I mean, you can't trace a call. You don't know if it's man, woman, old, young. You don't know anything. You don't know where it's from. I mean, so, I mean, in one way, I don't know why the cops didn't try to do anything, you know, and try to figure out, well, who made that idea? Who came up with that suggestion? Why don't you do a show about the journey metal? We have this show, Fact or Fiction, it's a paranormal variety show. You know, we have guests come on, that kind of thing. Well, 
the, you know, things have kind of been a little slow over at the station, so we thought what we would do is we'd, uh, we'd make a little excursion there. There was a suggestion uh, via IRC, there was a suggestion via IRC to, um, to, uh, well, and also from to the mailbag. Yeah. That guy D something, whatever his name is. Well, you know, one thing about IRC that's really hard is that, you know, it, it really is hard to trace it because, I mean, it's not like, like you know, like the phone number they're calling from. I mean, this could have happened, could have been like uh, Shanghai where they were writing this message from. I mean, you just don't know. That's part of the beauty and part of the evil of it. It is amazing to be so near, yet so far from the possibility of knowing who the killer is. D something. Over at the station, so we thought what we would do is we'd, uh, we'd make a little excursion there. There was a suggestion uh, via IRC uh, to... Um, to uh, well, and also from to the mailbag. Yeah. That guy D something, whatever his name was. I mean, it's just not practical to keep logs of that stuff. I, mean, I get so much email, so much... It would just clog up my system. I, I, I erased it as we went along. I mean, once a job, once a point got finished, I killed the email, got rid of it. It was it was like a to-do list. I check it off, I get rid of the stuff. So once things weren't pertinent anymore, I just got rid of them. So I don't have anything of it really. I mean, there there were like a couple of emails that we had uh, at, at the very end there, but there's nothing illuminating there. It gets harder and harder to stick with your original gut feeling. I mean, because of the media, uh, you know, and the, the, the attention that the whole case is getting and how one-sided, uh, lopsided the whole thing is, and you start to think, maybe Maybe he did, though. Maybe there's a side of Jim that I don't know that, that was capable of such an atrocity. As this journey nears its end, I begin to fully understand the essence of what this is about. The media upon which these events were recorded, the media that should have been able to provide a truth more pure than ever before, has somehow become the story. This has become more than a search for the truth behind the fact or fiction murders. It has become an indictment of truth and how it is viewed through the lens of the media. A uh, pretty exciting moment here because the fact or fiction logo is on screen, uh, which means one thing, that we are now uh, actually getting our feed live to the um, cable company, the access... Reality television, the news the 60-second clip of truth have made even the strongest of doubters wonder. Are you a psychic or a psycho? Look, man. <laughs> I'll see you back at camp, man. Dude. Man, why do you gotta be so... What did you say to me? What did you say? A man? He said... Well, Wait, what do you mean he's gonna be where we did the camp? Psycho. Where the hell's the camp? This is the whole fucking thing. Where the hell is the camp? We can't lose well, we're losing well, him. go we find him, man. I'm not gonna go anywhere near him. What a fucking asshole, man. Just cut the damn camera already. I mean, what is the truth? The editing you process is it's like man. sifting that stuff out. That ultimately, I mean, not necessarily with these legal videos, but uh, uh, with a documentary film, I mean, ultimately it's what the filmmaker perceives as the truth. I mean, don't you think that's what you're trying to do, right? The mistakes that were discovered on this journey were stunning. Shoddy police work and a judgmental video presented the world with a person guilty before ever being tried. I know Jim is not guilty. 
I know that the truth is still at large, potentially closer than anyone can realize. It is as though the real killer planned a media event so amazingly cunning that it could be thought of as scripted, a kill ready for prime time, so to speak. Perhaps the demon we call the Jersey Devil did kill them in the Pine Barrens. But if so, the Jersey Devil is the electronic image, the sound, the communication to the masses, somehow twisted into a surrealist electronic world. I always asked the question last, do you think Jim did it? And with the exception of authorities directly accountable to the answer, I have felt that the answer given has been, it doesn't matter. The truth is what time has made of this event. It has been good for business. Often murder is. So many involved have benefited from this event. The inevitable book deal is being replaced with a career in the business of image control. And most of the people interviewed are ready to embrace it. I guess a grim irony here is these uh, post-its can attest to the fact that when we have some real dead bodies, then uh, the sharks start circling. Uh, strange that uh, an incident like that would uh, be a prelude to a, to a new phase in my career. Well, what's interesting is after the court case was over with all the publicity and everything surrounding it, uh, you know, I started getting uh, phone calls for a couple job leads. I mean, uh, you know, so in one way, it, this might have helped me out of here. How long will it take to process the entire tape? It's not my intention to process the whole tape. I don't need to do that. It could take hours. It could take days. I need to process a particular piece of this tape that could potentially reveal a killer. Shelley continues to extrapolate information from a frame, while I will reenact the events of December 15th, 1995. This is one of the stops that the guys have made on the way to the Pine Barrens. I know this because of the extensive documentary footage that they've taken of this place. I don't know what good this will do. I think it's just to keep myself clear on what happened. You know, the order of events. Strangely, the weather is almost identical to the way it was that day. I'm now traveling an access route that I know Stephen and Locus have taken for the Jersey Devil Project. Uh, we're in the midst of the Pine Barrens at this point. And what I'm hoping to do is, is see if I can't do a recreation of the campsite, perhaps the murder scene. Hopefully traversing this won't be too big of a problem. I'm using this video camera just as a matter of convenience. Using film out here would prove to be logistically too difficult. Uh, hopefully we can get you some good footage and really try to demonstrate the uh, intrepid nature of the with some more work that I will find the killer. I will see the face of the killer. All the pines in the forest came To hear the screams of the shepherd's name All the sheep in your flock remain Tied in stables, tied in stables Bless you, Mother, in your divine hand In the castles you have built with sand From the memory of Eden
This site is a very close approximation of the one used by Stephen and Locus on the night of the Jersey Devil episode. They'd chosen a clearing similar to this one as base camp for the telecast. When they ventured onto the Pine Barrens with their cameras, they would never return alive again. The documentary footage that they generated on that evening proves irrevocably that Jim Seward was not responsible for their murders. That Locus and Ryan Clacken were actually alive at the time they were ostensibly killed, and that the police case was shoddy at best. What is the Jersey Devil? It's a man wandering into the Pine Barrens never to be seen again. It's a mangled animal found on one of these access roads. Or perhaps it's something that rests within our psyche and we'll never truly understand. I've been on this project for months now and haven't come to a clear definition of what actually happened or who was responsible. All I know is that it's a mystery and it may permanently remain so. What is the Jersey Devil? I'm now outside of Shelley's studio. All the media, all the interviews, the truth comes down to this one frame. I've determined that this is no time to be distracted or set aside in the course of the events that I've uh, set into motion. My next step will be going to the Pine Barrens for a reenactment of the murders of Stephen Outcast, Locust Wheeler, and Ryan Clacken. I'm as strong in my resolve as before in, in proving that Jim Seward was not responsible for these murders, that he had neither the intellect nor the logical capacity to carry them through. I think that the replayment of our events here will be quite compelling in the demonstration of Seward's innocence.